Hey, I want to talk about Michael Egnor, who had some interesting things to say about determinism recently. But first, a key problem with determinism that I want, that I want to make sure is clear. Um, by way of reminder, I'm talking about the determinism that is advocated by people like Jerry Cohn and Sabine Hassenfelder and a whole lot of other people. Um, it's the all-encompassing type. The, the entire universe is controlled by the laws of physics uh, from the beginning of the universe um, everything is controlled by the laws of nature, laws of physics, uh, including people and our, our thoughts. So you have every thought and every action is simply something that was just determined by the laws of physics. Uh, there's no such thing as free will. They deny free will. So I've, I've pointed to several problems with this, several big problems. One is that we do experience free will. So this whole idea is anti-empirical. Secondly, there's an epistemology problem. Third, there is a creativity problem. <clears throat> Do we really believe that all the works of Beethoven were created by the laws of physics? I mean, come on, this is silly. Um, but there's an underlying problem I want to get at, which I want to make sure is clear. And, and but let me give an example to explain this. Let's say I made an outrageous claim like, right now I'm floating. And you'd think I was crazy. And I would say, wait a minute, let me explain this. And I'd give you some explanation. And you may or may not accept it. The point of the example is I tried. I made an outrageous claim, but I tried. I gave, it, I gave an argument, whether it's from deduction or induction or science or whatever, philosophy, I tried. What's interesting about these guys is they're going around making these claims, and so often when you read what they've got to say, they just throw it out there as though it's um, you have to agree with it. There's no question about it. Uh, it's a bare assertion. That's what they call it. Uh, in logic. Uh, it's a fallacy. Uh, you can't just assert your conclusion without backing it up, giving some justification. But they don't seem to feel the need to. They seem to feel as though it's self-evident. And I think it, it could be an argument from intimidation, really. If you say it with enough bravado, people will just shrink back and accept it. Um, it reminds me of this story by uh, Hans Christian Andersen called The Emperor's New Clothes, where the emperor is convinced that he has these fancy new clothes when he actually doesn't have anything on at all. And it's not just the emperor, the people around him fall for it, and all the subjects of the kingdom fall for it, all because it's, it's stated with enough bravado and intimidation factor. So... It's an interesting thing to keep in mind, but this should be a red flag for you is when these arguments that are A, ridiculous and have enormous problems and yet are stated without any justification, something interesting is going on beneath that. It's not just a wrong idea. There's more going on than just a wrong idea. Okay, now Michael Egnor. Michael Egnor is a neurosurgeon. He's a professor of neurosurgery, so a smart guy, obviously. Wrote a blog recently in response to this determinism stuff, and he listed some interesting evidence from neuroscience that is highly problematic for this determinism and denial of free will. And the link is down there. You can go read it if you're interested. I'm just going to summarize it briefly. I won't do justice to Egnor's uh, post, but... Just to summarize, he points out two categories of evidence. One is brain stimulation, and another one is seizures. Uh, for stimulation, there was this um, neurosurgeon in the 20th century, Wilder Penfield, who did a lot of awake brain surgeries, where he the patient was awake and he stimulated different parts of the brain. Really interesting. And he was able to... Um, stimulate all kinds of reactions. People thought they were moving their limbs, they were seeing things, they were smelling things, they were feeling things, they had emotions, but he couldn't stimulate abstract thought. He couldn't stimulate free will. Uh, and that was, there's so, Egnor points out that there's this distinction between, you know, kind of the more um, physical, concrete sorts of sensations and perceptions and the will, and that's a key distinction. Seizures is kind of the same thing. Uh, people with epilepsy, epilepsy have these seizures. A lot of work has been done in this area. Um, and, you, and the seizures can um, 
it can affect emotions and movement perceptions things like that but they do not invoke abstract thought or abstract decisions and the way Egnor puts it is there are no free will seizures so these two different types of evidence just uh, demolish this idea that there's no free will so it's another area of evidence I haven't even talked about because I mean this is so obviously problematic um, that it's it's more of a question of psychology and what's going on underneath it all, which is why I like that that key evidence I mentioned earlier. Until next time, religion drives science and it matters.